actually that i think i actually wrote my first song i think it was fifteen years ago i picked it out um so what I had planned to tell you is a little about what Cheryl already did, and to say that um, I started going to the Summer Acoustic Music Week in Lake Winnipesaukee in 2002, when I was 65, because Peggy Seeger was teaching there. And I hadn't seen her in years, and I wanted to see her. That was fun and interesting. Um, I took performance, voice, and guitar. And in the course of a week, I can't say I <clears throat> got all that much better. But, you know, I carried it with me through the coming year. I had never given up the guitar. I've always been playing. I hadn't been performing out for years. And um, in 2003, I decided to take Bob Frankie's course in songwriting. I figured I've never done that before, so of course it will be progress if I make do anything at all. And he had this the way of teaching where you were, he was determined you were going to uh, come up with a song. And he did very much, I think, what Cheryl does with her, with her kids. He gave us permission to, to allow our muse to come forth. Um, he asks, what kind of song do you wish you'd written? What song do you wish you'd written? And tell us why. So I chose Turning Toward the Morning by Gordon Bach. And why was his wonderful uh, chorus, Oh, my Joni, don't you know that the stars are swinging slow and the seas are rolling easy as they did so long ago, that beautiful imagery and the natural. He said, OK, so I want you to look at the stars tonight, then write a song and bring it to me at 9 o'clock tomorrow morning. That was it. It's like, what? I don't know how to write a song. Furthermore, it was a very overcast day got out of his class at 10 and I'm looking up and I'm like, there are going to be no stars tonight. So I'm like, I don't want to wait, want to wait till tonight or I'll be up all night writing the damn song. But I looked up and the song came to me just like that. It was amazing. And it was in fact about my father who had died, he died in 1994, this was 2003, so a while back. And he died in Cares Well, St. Patrick's Manor in uh, Framingham, an absolutely wonderful nursing home. And this was, uh, the song was really about our one of our last conversations. Uh, it's called The Gardener's Song. By the way, he was in his 90s. My father was an atheist. He didn't believe in God. He would not go to a temple or church. He preferred to play in the sod. His garden was his temple. He said it was no sin. His tomatoes and his beans, his flowers and his greens are religion enough for him. And now I loved my dad, but not his ways. I had too many questions inside, like where did the good and the bad come from and what happened when you died? So I left him in his garden and to church as I did run. I tried a few and then became a Unitarian. <laughs> My father lived a great long time. Of ills he had a share. His garden was a potted plant he could tend from his wheelchair. He did not like what he could see as he searched the path ahead. So he thought and thought and thought some more. And this is what he said. I can't believe there won't be me when my days on earth are done. But I've done the math and there's just no room for us all to be reborn. So I think that I'll become a star way up in the midnight sky. And you'll be able to wave at me as I am passing by. So when I look at the stars at night, I think that I can see my father gazing down on us from his place in the galaxy. He'll never know my <clears throat> grandkids nor bounce them on his knee. But at least as long as I'm alive, he'll be alive in me. Uh, I've actually played that at several memorial services <laughs> by request. Okay, so my next song actually 
was written the following year, the next one I'm going to share with you. I, I thought, I don't have Bob Frankie <clears throat> in my pocket, and I'm never going to write another song because I need a prompt, right? No, not really. All he did was open the door, and, and then I recognized when I had an inspiration, and I grabbed it. So this next song um, came the following year after um, I had gone back to Sam W., and I had um, take, uh, told Bob that now I wanted to learn how to write a blues. So he said, well, think of the worst relationship you ever had and just write a 12-bar blues about it. You know how to write it. You know about 12-bar blues. And it's true, I did, because I'd been singing other people's. This is so pesky. This tuner is not working. Let's just assume that we're OK. Uh, <clears throat> I don't know to give me a reading on that. Story. So I won't sing you that song. <clears throat> I'll sing you the next blues that I wrote, which was um, I was noodling around on the guitar, and that very few of my songs have been uh, driven by the guitar. In other words, have come from playing the guitar and then coming up with the, with the words. This was one that did. It's like the guitar dictated the song. It's called Blues Girl Blues. I was trapped in my life, stuck in a rut, couldn't connect because my heart was tight shut. I had the blues girl blues. I had the blues girl blues. I had the blues girl blues. I was a blues girl all the time. So I picked up the phone, grabbed the guitar, went to a place where every woman's a star. I took my blues girl blues. I took my blues girl blues. I took my blues girl blues, I was a blues girl all the time. Well, I learned to play blues, wrote me a song, forgot all my troubles and the people done me wrong. I lost my blues girl blues. I lost my blues girl blues. I lost my blues girl blues, but I'm a blues girl all the time. In the morning, blues in my head, riffing at the office, even riffing in the bed. I got the blues, girl blues. I got the blues, girl blues. I got the blues, girl blues, but I'm a blues girl all the time. So if you want to be happy, here's what you do grab a guitar and be a blues girl too, and lose your blues, girl blues. Lose your blues, girl blues. Lose your blues girl blues, but be a blues girl all the time. Here's the alternative ending. So if you want to be happy, here's what to do. Pick up the phone, grab, call Sam W, and be a blues girl too. Be a blues girl too. Lose your blues girl, lose your blues girl blues, your blues, girl blues but be a blues girl all the time. And I know that makes absolutely no sense, but I discovered, I just thought that was a throwaway song, but I discovered people liked it. All right, so those two songs are actually on my first CD, and I ended up writing, uh, having uh, four CDs. I am not, um, I'm not a perfectionist, actually. I have a son who is, has been somewhat of my mentor. He started writing when he was about 10. And he has yet to put out a full-fledged real CD because he is a perfectionist, and that's such a pity. So I had to do for him what um, Polly did for her mom. But I can't see. It's, it's even harder when it's your son <laughs> as opposed to your mother. Ooh, what are we doing here? I am tuning into an open D uh, Drop D, it's called, which is um, one of my favorite tunings. The problem is that you have to reach in the guitar, and it's a pain. And then when you put the capo on, you have to retune again, because the capo does something bad to the tuning. 
but unless you're a guitar hero, you will use a capo if you're a singer. And I ain't no guitar hero. When my children were small, I taught beginning guitar just to keep going and just have a little pin money of my own when I didn't want to be outside the home. And uh, I could bring people only so far. <clears throat> so this is called this is called uh, a perfect egg, and um, it one of my songs that came out of my kitchen. Um, I recognized that I had a, a ritual in terms of breaking eggs so that they they didn't so that the yolks stayed intact. Well, you find out here, and this is part of being old. My uh, latest CD is called The Truth About 80. It was written, finished last year when I was 80. So um, <clears throat> I had a friend, a very wise friend, who said, I don't want to be the kind of old person whose rituals become sacraments. But I have become that person. Ooh, this is really not OK. Sorry, I'm going to have to. Some of you are musicians, and probably all of you have a decent ear, so you can tell that was really off. Okay. <clears throat> to make yourself a perfect day, mark well what I do tell her. First choose one from a free range hen, her yolk so firm and yellow. Breathe in, breathe out, then tap the shell right smartly without quaking. And you will have a perfect egg to fry with ham or bacon. Now women, for a perfect life, mark well what I do tell oh, Tis best in matters of romance to choose a free-range fellow. <laughs> a kind who set your soul ablaze for whom your body's yearning. And then the both of you must stoke the fires and keep them burning. Yet truth I'll not forsake, my yokes they sometimes break, and blissful dreamers often wake to grieving. They say that heaven's nice, but earth it must suffice until it finally comes our time for leaving. Meanwhile, I've learned that broken yolks make omelets worth eating, and kindness leads to lasting love, though passion may be fleeting. Perfection is a lofty goal that some of us will strive for. Yet scrambled yokes and scrambled dreams bring much to stay alive for. Yes, scrambled yokes and scrambled dreams bring much to stay alive for. So that was a heterosexist song, as I realized. But you know, it's also in a faux Elizabethan style, which is one of my <coughs> favorite things to do. So my next song I'm choosing to put in here because it's in exactly the same tuning, and I don't have to do anything about that. And this is my newest song. It's not recorded yet. And it, it, it arose uh, one day when I had we, I was part of a committee that had finally gotten a welcoming town warrant article through our town meeting after working about for about a year to do so. And it was lots of meetings and you know on the computer and this and that. And it's almost like a job. And suddenly it was done. The town said yes, and it was wonderful. But my God, I woke up in the morning and I'm like, now what do I do? Now I am partially, I'm still working a teeny bit. I was a psychotherapist and I still see a few patients in my home two afternoons a week. But I am largely retired. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, it is pollen season, and this is how it's going to be. <coughs> so this is called retirement. <coughs> 
What shall I do when my shoots are all gone and I'm facing a void existential? I've had a nice nap, some tea and a snack, now my next choice seems so consequential. I could open a book and take a quick look, then get totally lost in its pages and read it till dawn, though I know that is wrong because not enough sleep, it will age us. Yes, not enough sleep, it will age us. See, I go up and then down. You can do that with me if you like. <clears throat> to the downs, okay. Shall I noodle around on my old Alvarez till a new song pops into my cortex? But then it might grab me, take over my life till I'm fully sucked into its vortex. If I'd heard in advance of this scary new dance and the wisdom that's daily required to balance my urges, my health and my splurges, perhaps I'd have never retired. Perhaps I'd have never retired. Of course, when the town starts to talk, and they notice I'm not on the clock. They'll come running around with new shoots they have found, and my leisure will sink like a rock. My leisure will sink like a rock. But I wouldn't go back to the life I was leading. It was fine for the hail and the hearty. In truth, I've begun to delight in my freedom. It's really a kind of a party. There's hours for causes, for chores, and for pauses, for songs that have yet to be written. And maybe for things that I haven't yet thought of, some hobby with which I'll be smitten. Some hobby with which I'll be smitten. Yeah. So here's to that time near the end of the line when you take off your necktie or corset. Relax in the sun, get creative with fun, though it's best if you don't try to force it. And when winter winds blow, you can see from the snow or sit back with a book by the fire. It's really quite nice, it's like sugar and spice, and I hope that you two can retire. I hope that you two can retire. <laughs> Thank you for being brave and joining me there. Uh, OK, so now we've had fun and games. And it's funny, I made a um, list of all my songs are according to whether they were light, mixed, heavy, or political. Um, and right now, the ones that are political are very heavy. So this one is what we call pre-political. Um, in that, that, I got that term, from again, from the wonderful Bob Frankie, which some of the rest of you know, like JB here. So glad you made it. Um, by the way, I, I belong to a songwriting circle, all of whom went to Sam W. Just about. I guess we have some new people who didn't. And that's very helpful. We meet uh, once a month, and it's both a sort of goad to keep writing. You can feel very ashamed if you haven't brought in a new song for a while. Plus, people give very good suggestions. I tend to come in thinking I'm perfect and don't ask for much help. <laughs> because when I write a song, uh, when I start a song, I'm then totally sucked into its vortex. And I'm literally getting up in the middle of the night and making more changes. And um, 10 or 11 or 12 or 13 versions is not, uh, is not a lot for me. So by the time I've done that for a month, come on, I don't want your opinion. But in <laughs> fact, they may give it, they may give it to me anyway. Uh, and, and, and often it's very good. On this one, they advised me regarding the um, melody, which was very good. They say, you know, that's what you always do, Peg. Why don't you do this? Because <laughs> they know my song, so they know when I'm repeating myself sometimes when I don't even know. Okay, again, this is, that's good enough. Okay, this is, this is called The Journey, and a pre-political song doesn't tell you what to think, but it gives you the information you might need to think as I do. So. <laughs> now, I, I, wrote this, I wrote this song in 2016, and things were not nearly as bad as they are now regarding the immigration issue and the issue of people seeking asylum. But still in all, they were bad enough for me to be upset enough to write the song. It's called The Journey. To 
the border or the fence across the endless sand. We will journey many miles to reach the promised land, reach the promised land. Northward from Honduras with our kids in tow, fleeing guns and gangs and violence bound for Mexico. Climbed on boxcars, fought off bandits. Further north we sped. Finally, <clears throat> finally, finally reached the Texas border. No place for a bed. No place for a bed. We knew we had to leave. The choice was do or die. We knew that we could fail, but still we had to try. They said it would be hard, the lucky getaway. The captured are detained, some few of us may stay. Found Coyote, gave him money, gave him all we had. Can we trust this new acquaintance? Is he good or bad? He knows how to cross the border where the fence is weak. We will climb or tunnel under to the peace we seek, to the peace we seek. We knew we had to leave. The choice was do or die. We knew that we could fail. But still we had to try. They said it would be hard, the lucky getaway. The captured are detained, some few of us may stay. Now we hear them, men and horses, are they on our track? If they find us, we'll be jailed and then they'll send us back. Night has fallen, someone's left us water in the sand. Someone hopes that we will make it to the promised land, to the promised land. We knew we had to leave, the choice was do or die. We knew that we could fail, but still we had to try. They said it would be hard, the lucky getaway. The captured are detained, some few of us may stay. To the border or the fence across the endless sand. We have journeyed many miles to reach the promised land. Reach the promised land. So I like to feel that my fictional family that I became quite fond of, even though I made them up, reached the promised land, and that they, that they not only got over the border, but that somehow they evaded capture and just dispersed themselves in some community where they were not found. But you know what? Not very likely these days. And of course, that whole separation <coughs> at the border thing was not taking place at that time. So this next song is uh, its a combination of being a little bit political and, uh, and being personal. And uh, this one was a real gift from the, the muse. I had been, um, I often listen to the news on the hour in the car, just to be sure I don't get blindsided again, as on 9-11. Um, and... Uh, Sometimes that I'm not quite done with the news when I get home, I just sit in the driveway and wait till, till listen till it finishes. And this was six o'clock at night, and it was in spring of 2016, and things were not going as I wish they would in terms of the primary races, especially you know among the Republicans. And I was really getting kind of upset about that, and so I had this odd thought came to me. I kind of looked up and went, where the hell are you? This is called Letter to My Late Husband. Now, he passed away now 32 years ago. but And I've had a rich life since then, but he's still in my thoughts off and on, and definitely at a time like this. Um, 
And I said, that's a song. I can write a song about that. So instead of getting out of the car, I had paper and pencil with me. I always do. <clears throat> I stayed in the car, and I, and I usually watch the CBS Evening News at 6.30. It's another ritual. Got to do it. Instead, I just stayed in the car in the driveway and wrote for about 45 minutes. And um, this was a song I'm pretty much done when I came in. <clears throat> The wind whips up this crazy snow in April Which lands this tiny pellets on my car The turkeys have begun their mating rituals And I am wondering where the hell you are The lover that I should have had forever <clears throat> To hold me as we watch the evening news Discuss the candidates and global warming. It might have been less scary done in twos. You left us in the middle of the story. <clears throat> the kids no longer kids, but not yet grown. You didn't see them graduate from college nor take their things and go out on their own. We didn't get to have a midlife crisis. Rethink our bonds and each begin anew. Of course, I don't believe that would have happened. And we'd have aged together, just we two. <clears throat> so many things I wish that I could show you. The way I've learned to fix things on my own. The grandsons, one of whom looks very like you. The kind of dark adults our children have become. The snow has stopped as quickly as it started. And from the yard and from the from the yard and driveway mostly fled. The little blue star flowers that you planted are sprinkled far and wide beyond their bed. I skipped the evening news to write this letter to let you know wherever you may be that though you're gone so long you're not forgotten that in my heart you still belong with me. And in my heart, you still belong with me. And in my heart, you still belong with me.